What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the brand new B-Link EQ12. Now this is a new budget mini PC priced under 300 and for that low price you are getting a 12th gen Intel Outer Lake N100 quad core performance clocked at up to 3.4 gigahertz along with 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigabyte SSD storage. There are also options to upgrade so you can add an additional 2.5 inch SATA drive and you're also getting other benefits like Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2 and a gigabit LAN and this mini PC is running full Windows 11 professional. So very interesting specs for the price and I can't wait to see what this thing can actually do considering this is an entry level mini PC at quite an attractive price. It might be good for general web browsing, office applications, email and possibly gaming. Well, we're certainly going to put this one to the test to find out exactly what it can do. Now, quick look at what you get inside the box. So we're getting a user manual. We get a metal bracket and some screws so you can mount the mini PC at the back of your monitor if you want to. You're also getting a short and long HDMI cable. Power supply, and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. And last but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. Now we've got a budget build quality, it's made completely from plastic, but I do like that textured finish on the top. So in the corner you can see the B-Link EQ logo, on the front you can see clear CMOS, we've got two USB 3.2 ports, we've got a headphone and mic combo jack and a power button. On the side we've got some ventilation and on the back of the unit we've got power socket, two HDMI 2.0 ports and you've got two gigabit LANs, a USB 2 port and we also have a type C port and some ventilation at the top for the fan. So we keep going, more vents and that brings us back to the front and here is a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. And you've got some details here on how you can access the BIOS and the boot options. All right, so we're gonna have a quick look at the internals, show you guys the upgrade options and the configurations. There are four screws to open, so let's get them open, shall we? Okay, so remove the four screws. You've got a silicon tab, which will help you pull the back cover off. And here are the internals. And the first thing you're gonna see is your cooling fan and a SATA connection, so you can add your two and a half inch SATA drive. Now to access the other upgrades, you need to remove three more screws. So three screws, one, two, and there's a third one in the corner, which you need to remove. A magnetic screwdriver certainly helps. Okay, so now I should be able to remove this fan cover. So there are two cables attached. You've got a ribbon cable on this side for the SATA. Just underneath you can see there is a fan cable attached as well. So if you just unclip the ribbon cable for the SATA, that should give you full access to the internals. Now RAM configuration, we have here 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Um, there is only one RAM slot and it supports single channel RAM only and that is the maximum RAM supported. So 16 gigs is the maximum supported in this slot. So that's already maxed out. And on this side you can see the M.2 NVMe SSD drive. Uh, we have 500 gigabytes pre-installed but you can upgrade that to up to 2 terabytes. And the SATA drive on top supports up to 2 terabytes as well. So that is basically how to access the internals and your upgrade options. Okay, so very interesting specifications for the price. I'm really interested to see what this can do. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up and we're gonna find out exactly what this mini PC is capable of. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this mini PC took 38 seconds to fully load to the Windows 11 desktop from a cold start. So this is the full version of Windows 11 Professional. I am connected to my 4K capture card. So desktop resolution is currently set to 3840 by 2160. Now let's check out these system properties. So as you can see, it's Windows 11 Professional with the 12th gen Alder Lake Intel N100 quad core clocked at 800 megahertz base and up to 3.4 gigahertz turbo. We've got 16 gigs of RAM, 64 bit OS, and it's already activated and ready to use. Now system storage info, we have 500 gigs of internal storage from which 474 gigs are usable. And from that we have 438 gigs free to use. 
And the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which we're going to be testing right now. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the default media player. So the first video, high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo, that's 160 megabits per second, and you can see it's playing super smooth. Next up, I tested the 180 megabits per second 4K Jellyfish sample, and that also played quite well. And the real test, 400 megabits per second, which also played surprisingly well. So next up, we are going to test out some 4K60 HDR samples. So as you guys can see, this mini PC can play a wide range of different 4K file types, including HDR formats with no issues. So now we are moving on to some video streaming on YouTube and it does support 4K60 with HDR and streaming quality and performance is top notch with no issues. So let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. We still go. What is this? It's a contest. The best Gran Turismo players in the world get a chance. So next up, I loaded up Netflix and maximum resolution supported was Netflix Full HD. And Amazon Prime also gave us a maximum resolution of 1080p. You good hen. You're gonna get... So time to test out the gaming performance, starting off with GTA 5. And here are the graphic settings. So resolution is set to 1080p 60Hz, VSync is off, and graphics are set to high. And as you can see, we are achieving around 18 frames per second average, with the TDP going up to around 14 watts. The Intel graphics are being pushed quite hard at 99 to 100%. Now to try and improve the frame rate, I dropped the resolution down to 720p and reduced the graphics to normal. And I found these settings to be the sweet point for this mini PC, as now we're achieving nearly 48 frames per second, with the TDP peaking at around 21 watts. So with the resolution set to 720p and graphics set to normal, this game becomes quite playable on this system. Now I know this is a 10 year old game, but it's still quite demanding for entry level systems like this one. But ultimately, this should give you a good idea of what to expect from this mini PC in terms of gaming. I also wanted to test out something a bit more recent. So I loaded up Undisputed Boxing through Steam. Resolution was set to 720p and graphics are set to the lowest. And we're achieving around 12 frames per second, which is ridiculously low. So playing those two Steam PC games should already give you a very good idea on the gaming performance. I would definitely not recommend this mini PC for gaming. Casual games like Candy Crush or Tetris, etc. is fine, but anything more hardcore than that, it's a big no-no. Okay, so I'm also going to run a quick emulation test so you know what this mini PC can handle. Starting off with PS3 using my retro station hard drive. First game to test is Tekken 6. Now this game quite easily achieves 60 frames per second in most low-end systems. But you can see that we're achieving a much lower 24 frames per second. The game does not even render correctly at the start of the fight, but eventually fixes the rendering. But unfortunately, very slow performance. Don't expect to be playing PS3 games on this system. So next up, I'm testing PS2, playing SmackDown vs. Raw 2011, which is again quite a graphically intensive game, but you can see it's playing very well at just over 56 frames per second. I also tested some Dreamcast playing Virtual Tennis 2 and achieving a pretty decent 60 FPS. Next, Wii U playing Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, and you can see it's playing fine at 30 frames per second. So after emulating a whole bunch of systems, I can report back that you can expect a good performance from PS2, PSP, Dreamcast, GameCube, Wii and Wii U and all other older gen consoles launched before the ones I just mentioned will also play absolutely fine. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1150 and multi core score of 3144 and in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved a score of 321k and finally here is the CPU benchmark score by Passmark so just over 5500. Let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart 
for 2023, allowing you to see which mini PCs perform the best and also lets you compare the specs, features and the prices. Now all the mini PCs you see on this chart are ranked by overall benchmark scores. Now I've also added two more useful categories for clock speeds, bass and turbo and also maximum TDP. So as you guys can see, the B-Link EQ12 has achieved position 13 with an overall benchmark score of 321K. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online and free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new B-Link EQ12, bringing you an entry level to mid-range performance for a budget price. Now for under 300, this pretty much handles all your general office applications, email, web browsing, school work, uni work, college work, shopping, streaming videos and movies online, and maybe even playing some basic games. You get a great space saving form factor and lots of connectivity to go with it. And this video, my review and all the tests I did pretty much sums up what you can do with this mini PC and what it can handle. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. Meanwhile, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and sub. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.